Board districts are realizing that sometimes they have to have some outside help and support to help them be better. Um, Community-based organizations uh, are, are playing roles, uh, nonprofit entities, experts in the field. All those different sources can play a role because I think what schools are recognizing in some ways is that we can't do it alone. Um, but I think you've got to be very selective in terms of who you allow to come in and do this work. Uh, it's got to be a person or persons who understand the context, who understand the community, uh, who understands education, who understands students, who understands families. Because if you bring an outsider who doesn't understand that context, it can go bad real quickly, which makes the situation even worse. Uh, but I think what we have to do is begin to think how do we work in partnership uh, with, with, with experts, be they inside experts, outside experts, uh, and it's not an either or, it's a both and. And I think the more we combine these efforts in a way that really puts student uh, supports first, student achievement first, student safety first, I think that's how we begin to slowly make inroads. Do you think that um, schools or districts that don't have as much funding as we had that one year, mm -hmm can still make this kind of an effort, and if so, how? Yeah, so that's a, that's a good question about whether or not schools that don't have the kinds of supports can make this work happen. Uh, I think it makes it much more challenging to do this work without the appropriate supports to bring in outside resources, uh, to provide release time, or whatever it might look like. But that's not an excuse for why the work cannot be done. I think that it puts a, a greater burden on the, on the leadership to begin to then push and push. And I think oftentimes what leadership has to do is find some of those staff members who are part of a school community to kind of help them with that push, right? So it puts more of the, of the responsibility on, on the leadership and on teacher leaders, but it can happen. Uh, and so part of what I oftentimes tell schools that I work with is that just because you don't have the outside support, or because you don't have a grant, or because you don't have the kind of resources that's needed, you just got to be creative in how you do this work. Um, you've got to use data. Data is always free. Use the data at your disposal to just engage in a series of conversations. What explains this data? How do we respond? Uh, what are the sort of the, the root factors behind why we see this? Uh, what could we be doing that might contribute to that? And how can we be better in helping to develop strategies, resources, skills, and the like to help students and our families be better? Part of what also made this work, I think, really uh, powerful was the fact that there were a series of meetings we had with parents and caregivers. Uh, how do we bring them into the fold, right? How do we help them to understand that they play a role in this as well? Because we can't just dismiss uh, the fact that parents and caregivers are part of the problem, but then not view them as part of the solution. So I think it's got to be partnership across the board. Schools, communities, uh, parents and caregivers, uh, outside entities, uh, inside experts. I think the more we stop thinking about these singular approaches to trying to disrupt this issue, the more likely we'll be able to find some tangible solutions.